to Fire and Ice Wellness YouTube Edition. I am Tabitha. This is Michael. How's it going? And in today's video, we are going to be discussing the neck and the upper kinetic chain. Yeah, and this is tied to a blog post that we're going to put on our website. Um, and we wanted to show you guys some of the moves that we were uh, talking about in the blog to help kind of release some of that tension and have an expert show us you know, what things we can do to, to help alleviate that. Yeah. For the sake of this video, we are going to be discussing purely the upper kinetic chain. Now the kinetic chain is largely, you know, one system connected to another and we can ultimately connect everything from the head to the toes and then back again. But for the sake of this video, we are only going to be discussing the upper kinetic chain as it pertains to the head, neck, and shoulders. So um, also understand that within this video and the exercises that we're going to be discussing, this does not um, and should not be used as a diagnostic tool. This is merely a, uh, a glimpse into one of the many different exercises and techniques that you can do under healthy, normal, uh, unobstructed human movement, okay? So if you have any sort of underlying issues, injuries, uh, anything that might impair you know, human function, then that needs to be taken up with a healthcare professional. So let's go ahead and get started. So first, we're, let's talk about the kinetic chain. As I had mentioned earlier, we can connect this from one part of the body all the way to another and then back again. So we can look at this as from the arm through the shoulder into the neck. So one example we can do is to feel this kinetic chain is to extend one arm out to the side, extending all of your fingers, pressing your palm away from your head, and then taking your head over towards your opposite shoulder. Now with that being said, the straighter the arm, the straighter the fingers, the more you press your palm away, the more you're going to feel this from your hand through your arm crossing the elbow into the upper arm through the shoulder all the way into the neck. This is just one of many examples of a kinetic chain. So to optimize better posture to help release tension in the neck, we're going to start with some myofascial release exercises. All right. So we can start with a few tools, and I'll give you a few examples, you know, depending on what you have available. But for this one, we're going to start at the neck. So you can go ahead and rest back, bring it under the head, and then you can stay here, or you can pivot the head from side to side, feeling the suboccipital muscles and the muscles that run the back of the neck. And depending on how you place yourself, you may also feel this in the upper part of the shoulders and upper traps. Another way you can do this is to give yourself an elevated surface and have something called a peanut if you happen to have one of those available, or you would take two tennis balls, a cross balls, or a myofascial release ball, one for each side of the spine. So go ahead and place that underneath. Now with this, um, depending on how high you elevate yourself or even elevate your hips, will determine how much compression or pressure you put on top of the ball. So from here, you can start to play around because of the smaller, more concentrated size of the ball. You can play around where you place it on the back of the neck. Just make sure that you're not resting it right along the spine. Moving down is rolling out your back. So from that, you have a foam roller. You would rest yourself on top, hugging your head with your hands and moving from the tops of your shoulders down near your rib cage. If you wanted to take this between the shoulders, with this position, you can start to bring your elbows closer together, which will kind of fan your shoulder blades apart, and you'll get deeper inside of those uh, muscles between the shoulder blades. Another area that you could also address is the lats. Um, but there are more muscles pertaining to that, and just like Michael is doing here, he's hitting more muscles than just the lats. So by rocking forward, you start to address the pectoral muscles, and then crossing over the shoulder, then you begin to hit the lats as well. And then the smaller muscles in between. You could also do that on a myofascial ball, a tennis ball, a cross ball, even a peanut to some degree as well. Now this next exercise is something I would recommend doing um, not with a myofascial because of the broad surface. I would really recommend you doing this with a smaller, more dense uh, option. So I'm gonna have you place this ball, Michael, under one side of your chest. Putting it 
this side. Yep. Right? So you're going to place the ball under your chest, and then your okay. opposite arm is going to prop yourself up. Now you're going to have some slight rotation in the thoracic region to press yourself into the ball that's resting, or into the chest that's resting on the ball. So with this, you really want to relax that arm and shoulder that's on the ball and use your opposite arm to push you deeper into that release. Okay, so another exercise that we can do is a stretch, so a static stretch, that will ultimately affect what we were doing earlier, that kinetic chain. So seating, seating yourself on the side of a chair, bench, whatever you have, then you can give yourself a nice solid grip on the edge is preferred. So sitting up nice and tall, posture is really important. You want to make sure that your ears stack over your shoulders. From here, you're going to draw your head away from your arm. Now you need to make sure that you have a nice firm grip because that's ultimately what is keeping you upright. Sometimes you need a little bit of assistance. Yeah. A little added bonus. Now going into a chest stretch, you need a wall for this one. So you're going to extend your arm out, fingertips spread wide. Shoulder needs to be placed down. So create some negative space between your shoulder and your ear is ideal. Otherwise, we start to tug on the joint in an unsuccessful way. So that's really important setting up for success. Now, you're going to be turning your torso away. Something to consider here is the closer you're touching the wall. So that's a deep stretch. The closer your torso gets to the wall, the deeper and uh, the deeper the stretch becomes. So you want to be able to achieve a moderate stretch and really any stretch you do, but um, specifically on something like this, you need to move at a slower controlled pace. And are there variations like if I move my hand up higher, right? Yep. See more, what? Chest. Okay. So the higher the arm, the more you're going to feel it towards your chest. The lower you draw your arm, the more you're going to be feeling it up the arm into your shoulder. And a lot of times, like, the chest is tense, thus creating some muscle tension, right? Because the neck has to support that caved in position, right? Yeah, and there's a million different ways that we can offset our center of mass. So this really, if, you, if you're hunched over on a keyboard all the time, or reading a book, or doing texting this, on your phone, or texting on your eating phone, a meal at the table, or driving your yeah. car, or this is, this is nice to open that chest back up, right? Absolutely. This is a common, even, you know, kind of deeper into flexion is really what we see a lot whenever we're on our phone or on some sort of electronic or reading a book or doing something at a counter or table. So with that, you really disrupt and you overload that posterior chain, um, specifically that upper kinetic chain. So from here, I would recommend that you find your natural S curve by kind of bringing your belly button forward and then also raising your arms to bring the phone or the device to the height of your eyes. Yes, it looks a little funny, but for the sake of human movement and taking some strain off your back, I think it's very well worth it. So you're manipulating the device of which you're using, right? So let's say we need to manipulate the environment of which we're using our device. Having a low station is not necessarily ideal. Is it more comfortable? Maybe, but is it ideal? Not really. So with this, we want to be able to use our station to bring it upright at a more optimal position. So this could be stacking some books on your table to bring your laptop up, bringing your head, your eyesight level so that you're not drawing that head into the flexed position of the cervical spine, which would again, overload those muscles in the back. So that wraps up the neck portion of uh, this blog post. So I hope you enjoyed the reading the blog um, and you don't suffer from as many acute or chronic neck issues. Yeah, at the very least it gives you some ideas of which you could implement into your day to day or how you work um, you know, with your devices and the environment in which you use those devices. If you're not already a subscriber, get subscribed on our YouTube channel because we're going to have more videos like this. You betcha. Uh, so leave comments for any suggestions or insights that we may have missed. Thanks. Thanks for watching guys. Take care.